Yeah, I'll react to that, sure. All right, brothers. After doing this, uh, just in the morning, I like to wear a hat. Like after I get out of the shower, because my hair gets poofy, and I like to like. I'm trying to give myself hat hair. I've done it forever. Let's do it. Um, interesting. United Kingdom maps that teach us about the country. Let's go. Shall we? My name is Connor. Preemptive like. Original link to the video from General Knowledge. Uh, top of the description below that link to the Discord. Would love to have you. Click on it. Send you right over there. My name is... I said my name. Did I? My name's Connor. Phone's away. Even if you're watching on one, toss it. Go. War is only delightful to those who have no experience of it. Desiderius Erasmus. After doing this for the US, who Germany, Brazil, and a couple more, the United Kingdom. In this video, we're going to take a look at a few maps that teach us about the United Kingdom. The point of it is that maps are a good way to display information about whichever region I they are displaying, both as interesting information about the whole nation or as a way to compare different territories or areas within it. We'll learn about nine things in this video. Territorial division, Brexit results and current polls, GDP per capita, national identity, languages throughout time, religion, protected territory, population density, and life expectancy. By looking at these maps, I think we'll be able to learn a little about how the UK is as a country in terms of the identity of its people, the differences between where they live, and some interesting facts about territory as well. Starting with the ones on the thumbnail. First, regions. The United Kingdom is divided into its constituent countries, Scotland, Wales, Northern Ireland, and England. Each of the first three have their own regions as well, but a lot of statistical maps show them together while England is divided into its nine regions the nine as we can see i hear west and east midlands all the time west midlands okay see on this map and do they have all sort of like the regional capital like i imagine northwest manchester west midlands would that be um what's it called birmingham up vary a lot the highest divided into its nine regions the nine as we can see on this map vary a lot the highest population is southeast and london each with just over 9 million people while somewhere like the northeast only has 2.6 million and they vary on a bunch of other things which we'll see ahead although most of these maps aren't divided by region rather by county or even presented with the uk as a whole but still i think it's important to know this division then brexit voters the brexit whole so there's more people in this little yellow thing right here than in any of the other things other than the southeast but still i think it's important to know this division then brexit voters the brexit referendum took place a few years ago now but sense. i think it's I still interesting to revisit the results the map on the thumbnail is pretty simplified so here we can look at one with further detail although the general idea it presents us with is equivalent to this simplified version the darker the orange the more an area voted to remain the darker the blue the more it voted to leave the european union the first conclusion is that it was obviously a very close vote most tones are light but we can tell two clear things Northern Ireland. I did not expect. So Scotland, because they they don't want to just be. So Northern Ireland, I can see because they don't want a lot of trouble. No pun intended. Um, you know, I I'd be imagine I'd imagine a lot of people in Ulster. Right, Ulster is the entirety of Northern Ireland. Another name for it. Um to want to revive all of the the stuff and the troubles so i i can see why they'd want to remain i am shocked by just how almost completely um wales and and england not completely how so like if scotland and northern ireland weren't in it it would have been like a blowout 
Ireland and Scotland mostly wanted to stay in the EU, while Wales and England mostly wanted to leave. Although many urban centers, especially London, voted to remain as well. We don't have recent poll data in maps for this, but we do have it for the past two years in a chart. This data from Statista, a great source by the way, asks people whether they think they were right or wrong to leave the EU at the time the Brexit referendum was done. It seems despite Leave having won in 2016, it's been almost a constant over at least the past two years that people regret leaving, with most thinking it was wrong. Only in March of 2021 did a poll point to a general sense of agreement with having left. And something interesting is that, despite there being somewhat of a clear trend in which electorates of which parties mostly supported leaving and those who mostly supported staying, this isn't that visible in electoral maps. Places that mostly voted to leave don't necessarily just vote conservative in their majority, and vice versa with Labour, Liberals or the Scottish Party, showing us that this is a divisive issue for interesting this is how like politics this is more how it's supposed to be like in the u.s in the, in the u.s we we have become such in, entrenched in our parties that there is very rarely if you're a republican that you don't pretty much agree with every every other republican on or you're a democrat look this is just my opinion all right that like you're gonna pretty much agree it's like what do you believe in um what well i'm a democrat and that can just like that or what do you like what do you believe in this well i'm republican and i hate that i i think i, I think washington warning get just having two parties i'd rather have a million parties than two because two makes it so it's just like all right one of these sides is gonna win every time okay it's gonna be one of these two and and you feel like you're on a you're like on a team and you shouldn't i don't think you should feel like you're on a team i think like the team should be the country and what you vote for should be how you think the country would better but it's like no the team is democrats and progressives versus republicans and conservatives and and so it's nice to see over here that I I lost my point. I lost the plot. Isn't that isn't that a thing? Or am I using that wrong? That like there are a lot of people all over the place that vote differently depending on the issue rather than depending on their party, if that makes sense. For British people since the referendum up to today, but that their opinion is not only based on their political views, but apparently other factors as well. Wrapping up the ones on the thumbnail, GDP per capita. This map shows us which areas have the highest GDP per capita, although the data is from 2018, so a little outdated. The darker the blue, the higher the value. Urban centers have the highest, and these are mostly concentrated in southern and eastern England. Although some other cities have high values as well, like Liverpool, Manchester, the region in and around Belfast too. Scotland has a high GDP per capita in many of its regions, and only Wales seems to be left out of having a very high value in its regional capital. The UK government website site I got this from shows something really cool, which is the evolution of these values from 1998 to 2018, so over two decades. And it's interesting to see that there seems to be a tendency of growth throughout the entire country. Almost never does a region go back to having a smaller GDP per capita than it used to have. Although keep in mind, GDP per capita doesn't necessarily tell us how rich each individual actually is. Right, obviously you could have like one billionaire and then like six people with very low incomes and it's going to be a high average so i get what he means is it just a not that they would live by the total gdp of the area by how many people it has not necessarily in a way it actually is divided if a group of people has one chicken that doesn't mean each of them gets one fifth of the chicken to eat maybe two of them get 99 percent of the chicken and the other three have to divide the remaining one percent this next one is super interesting and it tells us about which national identity people in the UK mostly identify with based on the 2011 census. The 2021 Ooh, results. The Northern Ireland one is going to be interesting. Huh. What's this little purple boy or pink boy over here that's separated from the other pack of purple boys? See, it's like. The more north west, more northeast you are, the more British identify Br British identity, and as you get get diagonal diagonally southwest, it gets more Irish. And then there's this one that kind of goes back. 
passports weren't available yet due to the census not being complete, they have five options. Scottish, Irish, Welsh, English, or British. The results aren't surprising. Most people in Scotland consider themselves Scottish. I am Rhode Island forever, New England until I die. And then I'm American. I love my country, but not as much as I love uh, New England and not as much as I love Rhode Island, that's for sure before anything else so yeah i i wouldn't yeah same happens although slightly less with wales as well as strongly throughout england but two key details call our attention first london mostly considers itself to be british rather than english perhaps a great example of how it is successively seen as the capital of the united kingdom and all of its constituent countries not just england where it is located but i think it has more to do with the international character that london has hosting people that move from all over the world to london because they want to be in the United Kingdom, not necessarily because they want to be in England. Also, the number of people who move there Good from point. what was at the time the British Empire territories throughout the world likely consider themselves more British. Look how close you guys were. That would have been so freaking cool if you could walk from South Africa to Singapore in just British territory. You can't, obviously. But, um, Egypt. Iraq, Iran, and then you're there. And a bit of, uh, of, uh, Thailand because of that fact as well. In Ireland, some counties consider themselves more Irish, perhaps in support of unification, perhaps not, but many of them consider themselves British. In fact, I would say the majority based on this data. And this must be because of their support for union with Great Britain, thinking that defining themselves as Irish would mean that What's the big lake? They want to be united with the Republic of Ireland, while defining themselves as British assures they remain a part of the United Kingdom. Although it sucks we don't have more recent data about this, because it would be very interesting to compare this map with a more recent one to see how the latest years, especially going through the Brexit vote, as well as the Scottish independence referendum would influence people's perception on being british or something else another cool map that is related to the identity of british people a little is this set of maps which shows us the evolution of languages used in great britain and ireland throughout time it's fascinating to see one thing right away irish gaelic is the only one that has lasted since the first map from the year 400 back then common brightonic was dominant throughout with pictish being the most spoken language in scotland by the year 500 Old English began showing up on the map, and Welsh set itself apart too a hundred years later. Scottish Gaelic began gaining importance, and by 900 AD, Norse started showing up, likely due to the invasions of the Danes. By the year 1000, the language divide mostly illustrated the division between the countries. Irish Gaelic in Ireland, Scots Gaelic in Scotland, Welsh in Wales, and English in England. Although Cornish, for French, instance, as any? well as Cumbric, was still present. But as we go through the following centuries, English begins an almost complete takeover related to the takeover of English control over the islands, first of Scotland, then of Wales, and then Ireland, completely forcing Cornish into disappearance as a main language as well. But the main detail is important, because despite English being the most common and dominant language in the UK today, many people in Wales still speak Welsh as well, as they do Gaelic in Ireland, Cornish in Cornwall, or Scottish Gaelic in Scotland. For this next one, I'm sorry, but we can't use a map and we need to use a graph instead. This is because Christianity is the dominant religion in every single area of the UK, at least at a large scale. And so a map would just look like this, providing us with very little information. Well, what about Protestant versus Catholic? Only the percentage of people that are Christian, both Protestant or Catholic. The oh. only conclusion is that Northern Ireland is the most Christian region and Scotland the least. At most, we can use this other map, although it's exclusive to England and Wales for some reason, which depicts the... How is there no Protestant Catholic map? Or did I miss mishear what he said the largest minority religion by council there are two things or rather Buddhism. colors that instantly call our attention yellow and green hinduism and islam respectively which seem to be the most common in the majority of places red sikhism is also somewhat common in these areas around the center and in london as well oh thank god oh wait never mind well, but in very residual <laughs> values, joking. as we will see now, because the graph provides us with additional information and a clear image on both the weight of each religion in the UK, but also its evolution over the past decades. And we can see that Protestantism, more specifically Anglicanism, has been steadily declining over the last 120 years, from almost 80% of the population in 1900 to about... The only two that are growing seem to be Islam and 
and nothing. So Islam is the fastest growing religion there. But Makes half sense. of that value now. The reason why is also clear from the graph. While other religions, namely Islam, have increased a little, that's clearly not the reason why Protestantism has declined. Instead, that reason is the steady rise of no people who say they have no religious affiliation. Surprisingly, Roman Catholics have maintained their level about the same as they were a hundred years ago. I if like I like no af no affiliation better than atheist. Because I, I technically I'm atheist, but something about the word that just comes along with a lot of like weird baggage that like I feel like if I say I'm atheist, I feel like people like assume I, I hate religion, which I don't. So I like no affiliation. I have been no affiliation my entire life. Do you know why Catholicism goes so much against the trend? Let me know in the comments. Speaking of how the Catholics have been able to conserve their percentage of followers, what about protected areas? Get it because they serve the purpose of conserving the environment? Anyway, this very recent map from 2021 shows us all areas the Cod Wars is within the United Kingdom that are protected, both at land in green and at sea in blue. And I was surprised by how many and how extensive they are. I would dare say maybe 20 or 30% of the UK's territory is protected. They started surprisingly early in land protection. This chart goes all the way back to the 1950s. And since then, land protection has been increasing immensely. Not to mention the gigantic leap that sea protected areas took from 2010 onwards. A good sign that the various governments over the past years seem to be taking into account the importance of safekeeping their land, their environment, and nature. But what about the areas that aren't protected, essentially where people live and work and where factories exist? Those would be the remaining territories. And something interesting about them is population density, meaning how many people there are per square kilometer in that region. This pixelized or rather gridded map shows us that data. It's interesting because- Wow, so there's like a giant portion of the population is in this like diagonal area. Not not too many people over here, huh? Or up here. Because from a population density map, we can not only see the areas which are most densely populated, but also the areas that have the most people. We get the clear notion that England is incredibly more populated than the other three constituent countries of the UK, with many of its urban centers being so big that they phase out around them in increasingly less and less densely populated areas. London is the best example of that, going from a purple core to red, orange, yellow, and then finally green. Birmingham, I think, is another very densely populated area. In blue, are the regions that are least populated. So the Manchester, Birmingham, London, like draw those three points and then a line through it with less than 50 people, people per square kilometer and some might match those protected areas we just saw. Cornwall has very few people, Wales even less with the only higher population concentration being in their capital of Cardiff in the south and up north where they might meet the extended area of Liverpool. Scotland is interesting because they essentially have three population density areas. The south which is basically empty, this middle strip which is very populated being very- I just noticed you guys really don't have any big lakes like anywhere I, I think up in scotland or maybe it's just not a good picture of it standard area of liverpool scotland is interesting because they essentially have three population density areas the south which is basically empty this middle strip which is very populated being very small and thus with a high density and then the north which is basically empty as well again partly due to protected areas but also due to the inhospitable conditions they present only aberdeen and it's like it looks like a map of maine Population density, just like a lot in the bottom and then more moose than people up north. In Inverness are small exceptions. In Northern Ireland, only a few regions make it into the green, very few in the yellow, and only the area in and around Belfast present a high population density. And finally, life expectancy and how it differs throughout the UK. It's divided between males and females, left and right respectively, but generally the good bad results match, only varying a little. And through this we can see in which regions of the UK life expectancy is the biggest. There are a lot of factors that can influence life expectancy, childhood conditions, education, social economic status, lifestyle, access to good healthcare, among many things. We can't pinpoint which factors are lower in each of these regions, but we can conclude that one or more factors need to be necessarily worse or better if there is a variation in the life expectancy value. Maybe the GDP per capita information we saw earlier has some impact. If people are, on average, making more money, they will have a higher quality of life, with less stress, access to healthier food, which is often more Maybe it's negligible, but I thought maybe like pollution would play 
a factor, but clearly it's not. You will have a higher quality of life with less stress, access to healthier food, which is often more expensive, and better healthcare conditions. If some regions have a higher level of education, maybe they have access to higher paying jobs, leading to all those benefits we just mentioned. Except in the, is it Cardiff or the southern Wales area where it's more populated? Among many other conditions that might vary. The first conclusion is that England, especially Southeast, South and East England, does best. With its life expectancy reaching almost 87 years old. In What's that red blotch right there in the middle of the blue? Is that Bur Birmingham? Some places, while Scotland seems to do the worst. Glasgow City, for instance, only has 72. It's also important to note that despite the good, bad results matching for male and female, the values differ a lot. For instance, the lowest male is 72, but the lowest female is 78, while the highest is 83 and 87, respectively. Why is this that? is a reality in all countries in the world, not only in the UK. Women usually have higher life expectancies than men. Why is that? So, those were a few interesting maps of the UK that teach us about the country. It's always difficult to choose which maps to use in these types of videos, and I had a particular difficult time finding interesting ones for the UK, because the point is to do three things. Learn about the people of the country and their characteristics, such as religion or language. Learn about the country's territory, such as how it Don't is divided, what it's used for, and where people mostly live. And learn about how different regions compare internally in some aspects. I think we achieved the goal of learning a little about each of these three things even though the amount of information about them is essentially infinite so if you want to learn more about the united kingdom's people its territory and how it compares internally let me know in the comments and i can always make a part two of this video with more interesting statistical and data maps thanks so much for watching this video subscribe you if making. you want and i will see you next time for more general knowledge cool video yeah i love maps maps can teach me a lot and they don't get me all frazzled like giant paragraphs do i'm more of a picture book person hope you're all doing well i need some coffee if not chin up you'll be good soon my friend all right trust me love you guys see you next time goodbye